Hi everybody, Mark here with today's song. Uh, you know, since songs uh, associated with movies tend to be pretty popular, I've decided that uh, today's song is also associated with a movie and it also ties into a recent current event, uh, somewhat unfortunately. That song is Kiss from a Rose by Seal, which was of course featured in the movie Batman Forever, which was directed by Joel Schumacher, who passed away a few days ago. Um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and debate the uh, impact and legacy of Schumacher's Batman movies. Uh, if you want to do that, there are literally hundreds of videos on YouTube that you can go check out. So uh, have fun with that. Instead, I'm just going to note that it was kind of unfortunate that it became such a defining uh, thing for Sch Schumacher toward the last few years there, um, in that it overshadowed the fact that he was a very talented director who you know, directed such classic films as St. Elmo's Fire, The Lost Boys, Falling Down, A Time to Kill. Um, and also he had a reputation for being a really nice guy. Actually, um, Denny O'Neill, who I discussed in my previous video, uh, when he was the editor basically in charge of Batman comics uh, from the mid 80s to the mid 2000s, uh, would work with anyone in Hollywood uh, to consult on any Batman related projects. So he obviously worked with Schumacher a few times. And Denny said that while it was very clear that Denny and uh, Joel had quite different interpretations of uh, who Batman was and what he was supposed to be, uh, that Joel Schumacher was a genuinely nice human being and always pleasant to deal with, which Denny Riley added was unfortunately the exception and not the norm when dealing with Hollywood. Um, I think further evidence of that is that uh, several uh, stars have come out this week uh, basically saying that Joel Schumacher either launched or took their career to the next level. Uh, these, these include uh, Rob Lowe, uh, Corey Feldman, Matthew McConaughey, and of course, Seal, who credits Schumacher uh, putting Kiss from a Rose in Batman Forever with really launching his career. Uh, when Seal wrote the song, he was still a struggling artist. He had not actually been signed to a record label yet. He uh, sang the song into a little tape recorder, and when he played it back for himself, he thought it was terrible. Uh, so much so that he says he actually took the tape recorder and threw it in the corner and then forgot about it. Um, it was when he was making his second album after being signed that Seal brought the tape recorder to the studio and played it for his producer, Trevor Horn, who in addition to being a producer, was also in The Buggles. He's the guy with the giant glasses in the uh, video Killed the Radio Star music video. So, and Horn was the one who actually said that, hey, let's put it on the album, and I think this might actually have some potential as a single. And initially, he was very wrong. Uh, the song debuted at 60. Uh, by the second week, it dropped down to 80, and the next week it was out of the Billboard Top 100. Uh, so, so it was actually kind of a flop at first, and it was somewhat forgotten about. It wasn't until Joel Schumacher reached out to Seal because he was a huge fan of his music about giving him a song to use during a love scene in Batman Forever. It was actually Seal's agent who suggested that they send him Kiss from a Rose. Uh, the next day, Schumacher got back to Seal, and interestingly enough, uh, while Joel felt it was not right for the love scene, he still believed that it was an incredible song and he wanted to put it in the movie somehow. So he decided to play it over the end credits, thus ensuring that anybody who went to see this blockbuster movie would hear Seal's song. Um, Joel also worked with Seal to create a new music video that actually incorporated uh, clips from the movie itself into it thus ensuring it would be played many, many times on MTV in the run-up to this highly anticipated film. And sure enough, the song was a hit. Um, it shot to number one, uh, and Seal won a number of Grammys, including the top two uh, that one could win for a song and Best Pop Song Grammy. Um, however, people have often wondered why it took Batman <laughs> to make the song into a hit. A lot of people point at the fact that it's actually kind of a strange song. Um, musically, even though it's considered a pop song and won a Grammy for being a pop song, the song is actually a waltz in that it's in 3-4. Uh, it's probably the only waltz I can think of that people associate with Batman. Um, lyrically, too, the song is kind of uh, 
mysterious, almost symbolic. Uh, people aren't really sure what the lyrics are about. And Seal thus far has refused to really explain and enlighten people on that. He's only said so far that it's probably about three or four different things, uh, one of which was a past relationship. Actually, Seal believes that the mysteriousness of the song is a positive in that the listener can then interpret it and really feel it in a way that is significant and relevant to them, thus enhancing their experience and making it that much more personal and meaningful. So maybe Seal's onto something. Maybe the mysteriousness is why it eventually did become a hit. Uh, if you want to watch Joel Schumacher's music video for the song, please click the link in the description below. If you like what we're doing here, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and I will be back soon with another song. Bye-bye.